This next gentleman is a great friend of mine. You've seen him on NBC. He's also part of the Long Island Comedy Festival. Let's give a big round of applause for Stan Keshner! Thank you, Rob. Everybody having a good time so far? Well, I think I can put an end to that. And if you think I look old, well, you hear my act. <laughs> I'm happy to be here at Molly Malone tonight. Last weekend, I performed at the Borgata Hotel in Atlantic City, main floor men's room. <laughs> so I'm happy to be any place where the audience is facing me. <laughs> Since my retirement plan isn't working out, which was based on buying lottery tickets. I'm taking a couple of classes in President Obama's self-help program. The two classes are building my new home using corrugated cardboard and the art of cooking with Alpo. Now I know that I'm not the only person that got hurt in this damn economy, but I even had to stop drinking and doing drugs. But I don't care, because at my age, I can get the same effect by standing up really fast. <laughs> when I tried to stop drinking, I went to AA, and the first thing they told us was not to hang out with alcoholics. So I stopped going to meetings. <laughs> I also tried to stop smoking. My doctor gave me these nicotine patches. Can't keep them lit. <laughs> Now, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of your parents for coming, otherwise you wouldn't be here tonight. And the rest of you will figure that out on your way home. There was a time I remember. That's it, it just happened to be a time that I remember. It happens all the time. Since I'm older at home, I only have to do the easy jobs. Actually, I have one chore. I clean the cat. Now my biggest problem is getting the fur off my tongue. But don't encourage me. It's going to get worse. But whenever there's a hard job, everyone says, let one of the younger men do this. I hate when I hear that in the bedroom. I say, hey, wait a minute, that's not fair, this isn't hard. She says, exactly. <laughs> I got married while I was in the army. Now those were the days when a lot of guys ran away to Canada in order to, get a, in order to avoid the draft. Today, we have a name for those people. We call them Canadians, it's just the way it worked out. <laughs> But not me. As soon as I got my notice, I immediately began to get into shape. I ran for 20 miles a day for 15 days and was 900 miles from the Canadian border when they caught me. I took my army physical with 200 other happy captured draftees in this giant room with marble benches. And the first thing they did was had us strip stark naked and sit. And when those sweaty naked butts slapped down on those marble benches, it sounded like an audience applauding. <laughs> After a while, they had us form a line. And I learned something that day. When you're in a single file with a group of naked men, it's very important not to walk a lot faster than the guy in front of you. <laughs> Or worse, stop short. <laughs> After basic training, they sent me to a small island in the Pacific where they promised there would be three women for every man. As it turned out, it was the same three women. <laughs> and that's how I met my wife. Eventually, the army sent me home with three things I didn't want and didn't need. Bad dreams, an unidentified sexually transmitted disease, and my wife. Now, you guys 
look like nice people. Even so, I'll bet at one time or another you've come across somebody that you just can't stand. Well, here's my philosophy on that. If you meet somebody that is just so obnoxious you can't handle it, you've just met my ex-wife. <laughs> my ex was a school teacher. She taught special ed. <laughs> Hold it a minute, they made her retire because Ed graduated. <laughs> so then, she took some classes in psychology and was always psychoanalyzing me. When I told her that I wanted to fire the pool boy, she said, you're threatened by younger, virile men because you're getting older and coping with your own mortality. My only argument was, we don't have a pool. <laughs> Even so, for a while there, we did have a storybook marriage written by Stephen King. <laughs> we even tried to have a sex a life by role playing. I would dress up as a fireman and she would dress up as a woman that didn't want to have sex with a fireman. <laughs> I did everything I could to spice up our marriage, to make it more exciting, but she always found out about it. <laughs> I even carried her over the threshold, and that took two trips. <laughs> On the back of her sweatpants, she had one of these cute messages, like they have once in a while. Her said, to whom it may concern, this space is available for advertising. Caution may back up without notice. <laughs> <laughs> On the second line, the name, phone number, street address, city, state, cell phone, and a life-size picture of Brad Pitt, which is about as close as she'll ever get to sitting on his face anyway. So there. Oh, somebody said, oh, don't own me. Now I hear she's on a special diet where she's lost 10 pounds each week for the last four weeks. I'm getting very excited. Another 30 weeks and she'll be completely gone. <laughs> and you might expect this woman was a miracle worker in a kitchen. She could turn food into garbage in under six minutes. <laughs> Her cooking did get a little better once she figured out that a smoke alarm was not a timer. <laughs> but even so, after every meal, I had to take a fistful of tongues. If all I had was coffee, a fistful of tongues. I was sure if I ever dropped dead from food poisoning when I hit the ground, I would make my own chalk outline. <laughs> I came home one night and there she was crying. Oh, Stasha, I don't know what to do. The dog ate our dinner. I said, it's okay not to worry, I'll get another dog. <laughs> to which she saw her, she replied, the damn dog is over in a the corner there licking his butt. So I said, well, perhaps he's just trying to get the taste out of his mouth. <laughs> which didn't help the situation at all. So then, she said, this weekend, when you go hunting, this weekend, I'm going with you. All I could think was, damn it, now I really had to go hunting. So I took my wife hunting, and I taught her how to hold a bird without leaving teeth marks. <laughs> I only wish you could have gotten that straight in the background. <laughs> oh, 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 did I cross a line there? <laughs> well, I thought it was funny, and you folks reacted just about the same way her parents did. <laughs> and her parents hated me from the moment they met me. They thought I was a pot-smoking wise guy that just wanted to screw their daughter. And I thought somebody must have told them because they weren't that smart. 
They passed away a few years ago, and they say you shouldn't say anything about the dead unless you say something good. The dead, good. <laughs> And so, we divorced. Big surprise. Hey, listen. Would you stay married to somebody who just did nothing to help around the house, cheated on you all the time, and wore too much makeup? Well, neither would she. And instead of a civil divorce, we went for a religious divorce. Now, in the Jewish religion, this is called a get. So we went to a rabbi to get to hell away from each other, actually. <laughs> and he decreed we would each get some things. She would get the car, get the house, and get the money. And I would get out, get lost, and get screwed. <laughs> then she said she also wanted 50% of my business. I said, you're going to get that when pigs can fly. I forgot she was now working as a stewardess. <laughs> and so it finally dawned on me the reason why Jewish women revere the get is the single most important religious ceremony. Even more important than the circumcision. And that's because with the get, they get rid of the entire prick. <laughs> I also learned the primary reason that Jewish women marry Jewish men to begin with. That's because they like men that are circumcised. They cannot resist anything where they get 10% off. <laughs> After my divorce, I started dating older women. It was all I could now afford. My first date was with this lady in her 80s. Okay, 90s, <laughs> whatever. So we're in her apartment, and she said, Stash, I'm going into the bedroom to slip into something more comfortable. Turned out it was a coma. <laughs> The sex wasn't good, but it was easy to get out of there. <laughs> after, after her, I dated this old abroad named Alice. We get back to her place, and she opens her dresser drawer, and it's filled with Viagra, Levitra, Cialis. I said, hey, Alice, baby, I don't need that stuff. I don't use that stuff. This guy's a stud, I think. And she said, well, you haven't seen me naked yet. <laughs> and she took her clothes off. I took Viagra and Levitra. I would have taken see Alice too, but seeing Alice was the problem. <laughs> After Alice, I started using Viagra regularly, and what I discovered was that the longer I take this stuff, the more I needed to get the same result, which now means at the rate I'm going, if I want to have a woody I'll, in six months, I'll be using real wood. <laughs> As it is now, I take Viagra just so that I can aim when I pee, but that's a different problem. <laughs> Now most of you guys think Viagra is great because it could last for up to four hours, which just happens to be three hours, 59 minutes, and 28 seconds more than I need. <laughs> Don't laugh, I have a plan. I think that the drug companies should work out a way to roll over those extra minutes. <laughs> but for me, one pill could be a lifetime supply. <laughs> and thank goodness I have my five, my favorite five, just like the cell phones I used to have. My favorite five, this is mine. Take them wherever I go and they never say no. Hey guys, 
You know that look a woman gets when she wants to have sex? Anybody? <laughs> I gave it a shot. When I was younger, safe sex only meant having a padded hip, boy. Now safe sex requires safety bars on a bed and an oxygen tank. <laughs> if I have a partner, you know I had to have uh, chloroform and duct tape. <laughs> at any rate, at this moment in time, in my life, I happen to be very fortunate. It just goes to prove that even an idiot like me can get lucky. I am currently with a beautiful Sicilian lady. I love her and I love her entire family. My favorite happens to be her Uncle Vinny. He's terrific. He's a wonderful guy. Oh, by the way, Vinny asked me to tell all of you folks tonight that the Mafia, the La Casa Nostra, does not exist. And if you piss them off, neither will you. <laughs> Vinny uh, apparently thinks I'm his part-time chauffeur. Last week, he had me drive him to the organ donor, uh, to the DMV, because he wanted to sign up for the organ donor program. That is, until he found out that the organs he donated had to be his own. <laughs> and they weren't interested in the bag of organs he brought with him. <laughs> As his part-time chauffeur, Vinny is always dragging me along to his associates' funerals. Now look, I'm Jewish. We don't do open caskets. We drop them in the ground as fast as possible. We're no longer taking any chances of another Jew rising again in three days. <laughs> then we sit shiver. For the uninitiated, those who don't know, that's when we sit in our apartment in our underwear with the air conditioner on. <laughs> Lord help me. But at these wakes, everybody goes up to pay their last respects. They did a great job on him. He looks better than when he was alive. One job was so good, the deceased actually looked alive. So somebody shot him again. <laughs> and of course, there was one service where they didn't have a uh, open casket, and that's because he was cremated. Rumor has it that was what killed him. <laughs> All right, you didn't like that part. So uh, having a problem with my memory, went to my doctor. After a while, he put me in that small waiting room, you know, the examination room, but this is good because I'm all alone and I do some shopping. Found some gauze pads, can always use those. A couple of latex gloves, you blow them up, or release them, and they fly around the room, they break. And then I got bored, so I licked all the tongue depressors. <laughs> then the doctor comes rushing in, as though I kept him waiting. I'm leaking. It checks my heart, checks my lungs, checks my blood pressure. All of a sudden, he says, you have to stop playing with yourself. I said, why? Is it affecting my memory? He said, no. I'm in the middle of your examination. <laughs> And at that point in time, we went in after the examination, we're in his office, he says, you also have to stop salt, alcohol, and all forms of exercise. So now I'm thinking, all forms of exercise, that can't be good. So I asked him a question. I said, well, what about sex? He said, I'm sorry, but I'm seeing somebody. <laughs> Finally, he gave me this new pill. It's a mixture, you may have heard of it. It's a mixture of ginkgo biloba and Viagra. It's supposed to help me remember what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> and now before I leave you, I just want to tell you a short story about my youth. <laughs> Growing up as a young man in the borough of Brooklyn, I was at a big party in that borough. 
And as luck would have it, I met this gorgeous woman from the Bronx. And during the long drive to take this young lady home, she turns to me and says, Stash, I want you to know I'm not one of the, these girls that goes all the way. So I dropped her off in Queens. <laughs> you guys have been a great audience. I want to thank you for playing along. I had a ball. My name's Stan Keshner. Here comes Rob Chiappi or somebody that looks like him. Hey, Keshner, come on!